Bob and Mike. Hallelujah. We are so blessed in this church with so many. We praise the Lord for the song. And our message today, one of the gentlemen in the men's class told me that it was about me going to jail. <laughs> well, no, not exactly. Though there is precedent for that apostle going to jail. There is precedent for that. But now we're going to be looking at some of the apostles in jail and uh, what it tells us about the early church. And our scripture is from the Acts of the Apostles, the story of the early church. Acts 5, verses 17 to 20. Please listen to the word of God. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says here that the religious leaders in Israel opposed the early Christians out of jealousy. Religious people being jealous of other religious people. Even the Roman governor Pontius Pilate who stood over Jesus' trial saw that they persecuted Christ out of envy. As it says in Matthew 7 and 18, where he knew that for envy they had delivered him. So somehow that's how you can end up in jail. Somehow that envy is him. Jealousy, envy, covetousness, one of the deadly sins. To resent someone that has something you don't have. That's what jealousy or envy or covetousness. To hate someone because they have or are something that you don't have. Usually possessions, property, prestige. Fame, honor, position, talents, but religion, <coughs> faith, truth. Can, can people be envious of others? Spiritual character or accomplishments as these religious leaders in Israel were towards the early Christians? because they were performing miracles and they were teaching a truth that penetrated the people that they were growing as Christians. Jealous of goodness? Yes. Human sin even hates and envies the good, the holy, the righteous in others. The very first murder, the very first murder recorded in the Bible was Cain, son of Adam and Eve, killing his brother Abel because God preferred Abel's sacrifice to Cain. Out of jealousy came the first murder, as it says in Genesis 4, 2-5 and 8. Now Abel kept flocks, and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of the firstborn of his flock. 
the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry, and his face was downcast. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. The first murder recorded in the Bible. There has historically been great conflict in the church because of one person or movement. Jealousy, resentment towards another because of accomplishments or charisma or the following that comes, say, during the Reformation or various revivals. Envy, jealousy can actually be in spiritual terms. And we must be aware of that. We must be very careful. Now, if we're righteous about, you know, self-righteous about criti criticizing someone else in the church or in the worldwide church, what is our motive? Are we sure it's because they're bad and we're good, or is it because they're good and we're bad? <laughs> because my friends, envy and jealousy really come out of the original sin, pride. Each of us wanting to be the center of attention, getting lots of praise, honor, when another gets that attention, being jealous of them. And trying to get rid of them, like Cain got rid of his brother Abel. Maybe not killing them, somehow getting rid of them. As in the story we read in the scripture. Locking them up in jail. Putting them away. Get them removed. Or in this scripture, literally put in jail. But, good news. My friends, we should be aware of this. I, I, I think certainly I am guilty of this. I know times in my life when I see somebody else getting praised or getting all the attention. I can feel that envy and resentment. Well, they should be saying that about me. Why don't we talk about me? I actually had someone say that once. I won't not in this church. Somebody I knew a long time ago. Actually, someone in my family. You know, my family is perfect. No family is perfect. But I remember after a particularly nice family gathering, <laughs> a family reunion, a certain member I knew rather well, I asked him how he enjoyed the gathering. He said he thought it was all right, but he said, why don't people talk about me? <laughs> oh dear. Oh mercy. Um, <laughs> whenever you find yourself thinking that, why don't they talk about me? <laughs> why aren't they giving me attention and praise? Huh? What's going on here? I don't like this. Who are they giving it to? Let's kill them. <laughs> That's human sin. That's Envy coming out of pride. But my friends, if you are on a divine calling, if you are the victim of such envy and resentment, if you're serving God, you will be. You'll be attacked by the devil, the world, and even fellow Christians. The devil will poke them and say, look at, look at them over there, getting all that attention. Look at who do they think they are? <laughs> Out there working for the Lord. Let's, let's criticize them. But my friends, if you are working for God, don't worry about them. Don't worry about people that say mean things to you. Unkind things. And they may not even know why they're doing it. But if you are serving God, God, even if they put you in jail for this, and the time will come in this country where they will put you in jail for being a Christian. The time of persecution is coming. For 
or you will be put in jail for professing your faith. But don't worry, just like these apostles were put in jail out of jealousy or hatred, God will release you. God will protect you. God will preserve you, as it says in Acts 5, 19-20. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out and said to them, Go stand in the temple courts and tell the people all about this new life. The reason the devil sends people to criticize you and attack you is so that you'll shut up. There are many, many of us who are shy, or backward as we say, backward about doing things because they're afraid of stimulating envy and being attacked. So, so they say, I'll just, I'll just lay low. I'll, I won't do anything, I won't say anything because I'm afraid I'll stand out and get attacked. God here is saying, not of course you'll be attacked, you might be put in jail. But he's saying, I will send an angel to release you. And then he says, go stand in the temple and tell the people all about this new life. So quite the opposite of being discouraged and silenced. That's the devil's technique. He wants to silence you out of fear. Out of fear of being resented. Fear of being attacked. Fear of being put in jail. And God says, don't worry, I will release you. But I'm releasing you to go out and tell the people all about this new life. Witness, evangelism, don't be afraid. You'll be surprised. The times you may be afraid to speak out for what someone will think or criticize you, say about you, do to you. When God prompts you, you'll be amazed how many times just the opposite happens. People say, I appreciate, I appreciate you telling me that. I appreciate you witnessing to Christ. I appreciate you telling me what God has done in your life. I appreciate you inviting me to church. When you're afraid, they'll be offended. A number of times you're outspoken. And they actually respond favorably. So if you're prompted by God, go ahead and do that. Don't worry about it. If you're prompted by God, if you feel the Holy Spirit prompting you, I can say this to this person. <coughs> Speak out. The church is entering a time of persecution. We're, we're a minority now. This is no longer a predominantly Christian culture in our country. We're like most of the churches throughout history. We're a minority. We're going to be persecuted. That makes the church more important than it's ever been in this country. Now we truly are a, a light in a dark place. The country's going to be getting darker and darker and darker. We're going to see, as Ezekiel 7 says, we're going to see more violence than we've seen the last month. We're going to see more. I'm telling you. But God is still God, and the church is still the church, and the church is more important than it's ever been. Don't let the devil or other people silence. When God prompts you to speak. Speak out boldly. As long as you are serving the Lord, don't worry about other people's jealousy or even persecution. God will release you and you will tell about this new life. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this story of the early apostles who were persecuted for their faith, who were put in jail out of jealousy. Lord God, we are often fearful of provoking jealousy or anger, resentment. Lord God, give us the boldness you gave these apostles 
thank you for your truth that you will deliver us, you will release us by your holy angels one way or the other. And we will go into your temple courts and tell about this new life. Lord, if there's one who doesn't know the new life because they do not know Christ, but during this service, God has been tugging on you, God has been drawing you, and you realize, I need that new life, I need that boldness from the fear of others, from the fear of jealousy or persecution, all you have to do is say yes to God. Say, yes, I know, I'm a sinner, I... I've hurt others, I've hurt myself and God. I know that that sin deserves punishment, ultimately death and hell. I know, Lord, that you came, you loved me so much, you came as a man, Jesus Christ, without sin, so he could take my sin upon him. And I can have forgiveness of my sin. And reside with the holy God in heaven forever. Just believe. You can profess it up here, you can profess it to God wherever you are. That's the new life. And then God's Holy Spirit comes to dwell within you. And you have the boldness that these apostles have. Thank you, Lord, for giving this evidence to everything. Amen.